Hello. Uh, in the last lecture, we learned how to calculate type 1 error and type 2 error probabilities. And today we are going to change the topic a little bit and we'll consider, we'll start with an example. It's a, let's start, let's think about Grande Ice Coffee. Uh, so uh, in, at Starbucks, Grande Ice Coffee is supposed to be 16 ounces. By the way, there was, I remember there was a someone there someone who sued Starbucks saying that uh, they're they are cheating on their iced coffees because uh, actually uh, it, like uh, if you take out the ice the actual coffee content is less than 16 ounces so uh, in the court uh, like finally of course Starbucks won because ice ice are kind of part of the coffee so uh, the content should include uh, the size of the volume of ice too. So basically, uh, so I, I, I made up this example from that, uh, from that news. So suppose, anyhow, back to this, back to this example. Uh, Grande iced coffee has to be 16 ounces. And suppose that you are a Federal Trade Commission uh, agent. You are checking if uh, any company is cheating uh, in their uh, marketing or in their products. So you'd like to test if Starbucks is honest in their in their uh, iced coffee amount. So we set the hypothesis in this way. So the null hypothesis is mu equals to 16. The expected amount is 16 ounces, which is uh, the correct amount, right? So Starbucks is honest, but the alternative is uh, not 16 ounces. So this is a typical hypothesis testing we considered. But the problem here is, okay, let's, so you are a government agent and you then, then based on this hypothesis testing, you can punish uh, Starbucks if they are cheating. That means if you find that the sample average is too small or too large, you are going to reject the null hypothesis, which means you are going to punish Starbucks. However, let's think about this again. Then why, by the way, why do we punish them if they give you more than 16 ounces? Hmm? Right? It's really stupid to, to punish Starbucks if you punish them just because they are too, too generous. They are too, uh, like too generous toward their customers. It does not make any sense. So we have to, we cannot apply the hypothesis testing in this case. Something need be changed. Uh, that is the alternative hypothesis. So far, we did not pay any attention to the alternative hypothesis. It was simply just, uh, everything other than the null hypothesis. So if the null hypothesis is wrong, automatically the alternative hypothesis is correct. However, now we are going to change the alternative hypothesis to an uh, inequality. It has now an inequality. So for example, uh, you may just change the alternative hypothesis this way. So you are going to punish Starbucks only when uh, their their amount is less than 16 ounces you don't care you don't punish uh, and you may think they would not give customers more than 16 ounces anyhow if they give more than 16 ounces uh, it's none of your business or you sometimes so so this kind of this idea is written in this way formulated into hypothesis this way or equivalently written in this way. So depending on textbooks, some textbooks take this notation and others take this notation. The only difference is whether the null hypothesis includes inequality or not. But in the end, it doesn't make any difference. They are equivalent. You may think, so more than 16 ounces is not possible or it won't happen at all. It's unlikely, totally unlikely, or 
you don't care simply so I'm going to consider they are 16 ounces or not uh, 16 ounces or lower so uh, anyhow we I don't care I don't I don't know what's going on on the uh, upper tail we will concern only on the lower side that's our only focus right I don't care if they are giving more than 16 ounces or not that is the basic uh, motivation of one tail test this is the one tail test um, so and the key idea is in, in many cases you want to reject the hypothesis only on one side if the observation is too large or too small and you care only one side then you have to use one tail test rather than uh, the previous uh, general hypothesis testing framework uh, depending on the direction of the alternative hypothesis uh, inequality you can think of upper tail test which means you care only about the upper tail so rejection occurs if uh, the observation is too large so if it's too large you reject or you may care only about the lower tail lower tail test exactly the opposite the rejection occurs if the observation is too small so um, it's clear from the example whether you are going to reject on the larger side or the smaller side it's it's clear and actually when I prepare the lecture uh, making up examples for two tail tests is more difficult one tail tests are so uh, common so a lot of examples fit into one tail test uh, framework but uh, the earlier uh, excuse me this this type of hypothesis testing is uh, less practical and hard to find in practice so it's a very important uh, topic so back to our example we consider a lower tail test for the Starbucks and so again the basic idea is we are going to punish the punish them only when they are serving less than uh, 16 ounces right that's natural right and then let me explain the intuition and uh, what's the different what changes in one tail test especially in lower tail test um, compared to the two tail tests we learned in the earlier chapters, earlier lectures, um, uh, we care only about this this side. So we, I, I, I call it suspiciousness. So you are considering uh, how suspicious, how unlikely to happen an observation is, right? If you observe something, you uh, you calculate it how how suspicious that is. And now, in, in the previous examples, we considered two directions. Suspicious, suspiciousness increased as it goes uh, into both directions. But now, this side does not matter. So if Starbucks serves like 16.4 ohms, none of you, not, not a problem. It, it doesn't, I don't care. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. But problem arises only on this direction it's a so Starbucks uh, is more suspicious of cheating if the observation goes this direction only in this direction that's the main difference because of this one-sidedness uh, everything changes like p-value earlier in the comp like so remember like if you don't remember what we did in the two tail test uh, go back to the earlier slide and compare at that time we considered p-value on both sides probability was calculated on both sides but now I don't care on this side probability on this side is not a problem so p-value only includes on the lower tail so I reject only on the lower tail so I care only about the lower tail probability so if you observe something here then 
uh, p value is the probability of outcomes that is more suspicious than what you observed right so probability that are more suspicious say that is the p value so p value is calculated only on one side then clearly so if you had two tail test your p value would include this probability too so of course this probability is included but also the other side uh, would be included if you considered two tail test therefore two tail test p value is twice larger than one tail test one tail test uh, p value so which is clear from the graph whether you calculate probability on both sides or only on one side so it's that's the idea and also in the critical value approach you don't need to care about this side again so in the two two tail test the critical values were uh, two-sided there was uh, a lower critical value and an upper critical value but now we are doing a lower tail test so upper critical value is useless we don't need it because we are not going to reject here so rejection region forms only on the lower tail so critical value is look is uh, only there is only one critical value on the lower side so uh, the critical value also changes uh, because of this and again a lower tail test lower the critical value for a lower tail test should be always below your hypothesis your hypothesis is 16 on this then your critical value should be lower than that and you reject outcomes even smaller than that right so always remember the direction where we are going where we are uh, looking at so then all the answers are kind of naturally followed and the t statistic has no difference t statistic is remember it's conceptually is the difference between observation and your hypothesis and then standardize that so uh, in by construction in its definition there's nothing about uh, one-sided or two-sidedness so it's it's just purely just difference so uh, t statistic itself does not change but p value changes as i explained uh, with the picture in two tail test you have to consider p value on the lower side probability lower tail probability and upper tail probability however upper tail test includes only on the upper side and lower tail test includes on the on uh, only only the probability on the lower side so this is a big difference as you can see uh, one tail test uh, p value is half of that of two tail test and the rule is the same the decision rule is the same in the p-value approach if uh, h0 will be rejected if p-value is smaller than alpha so uh, rejection rule is the same for p-value but how you calculate the p-value change it and if you take the t statistic approach the second approach is the t statistic approach now the rejection rule goes like this in in the two tail tests you rejected the null hypothesis if t is too small or t is too large so t is the standardized difference if the difference is too large i mean i mean too large in the negative side or on the positive side so if it's so the if the distance is too too large then you have to reject the null hypothesis however in one tail test it's not only about the distance but we care about the direction so we reject if t is greater than something for upper tail test and in lower tail test we reject if t is smaller than something but it is now a negative number another difference here is you change you use different 
alpha. So two tail test considered z alpha over two, right? You, we have used this value uh, since we uh, considered the confidence interval. But confidence interval and two tail test have the same uh, two tail two tail probabilities. So in two tail test or in the confidence interval, you had to consider both sides. But now, uh, so because you had to you consider both sides, therefore you have to split alpha into two sides. So uh, alpha is the error probability, but it has to be uh, divided into the lower side and upper side. So you, you consider alpha over two, but now you don't need to split alpha into two sides because everything goes to only one side. So the whole alpha is included here. So z alpha is obviously different from z alpha over two. So the decision rule, the threshold will be different for the t statistic approach. So this t statistic itself is the same, but the decision rule changes. So that's, um, that's the difference between one tail and two tail test. Okay, uh, then I'm going to continue uh, in the next video about the comparison of between those two. See you later.